Hi there, my name is Susanna and I'm a harpist and harp teacher and this is my weekly Coffee Break Harp series. In today's episode I'm going to answer the question what's the best harp for a beginner? So if you're someone who's just starting out and are wondering what questions you need to ask yourself in order to make the best possible choice, this episode is for you. Make sure you click the link in the description of this video to download the free PDF so you can make the most of this lesson. Then get your coffee ready and we'll get started. Contrary to what non-harpers may believe, there is no relation between how advanced you are and how many strings your harp has. Also, there is no relation between the number of strings and the quality of the instrument. You may find a wonderful 26-string lap harp and then you may stumble upon a harp with 40 or more strings which is completely unplayable. You will not know until you can play and physically are with the harp to try it out. As I said before, the number of strings doesn't change much how to how difficult the harp will be to play. Your basic harp playing technique, once you learn it, will allow you to play the harps of all sizes. What the number of strings does affect, however, is the kind of repertoire you will be able to play. You can find tutor books which are specifically written for harps with 26 or even as few as 20 strings, However, many of the popular beginner books assume that the player's instrument will have about 34 strings. Most established harp makers do have several harp models with 34 strings and also they often have a fleet of those available for hire. So if you can start on a harp like that, you will be able to focus completely on playing and not worry about whether your harp has enough strings to play a particular piece. One thing that the number of strings will affect is the size of the harp, as higher number of strings will usually mean bigger instrument and a slightly different shape. Some of the smallest harps with fewer strings may be built as lap harps, like the one you see here. You will usually find models which have between 20 and or 26 strings, this one has 20 strings. These harps are designed for you to hold them on your lap in order to play. They may sometimes come with straps, so you can strap them onto yourself and play while standing up. Whether the harp is attached to a strap or sits on your lap, the weight of the harp still rests on you, which means that apart from playing, you also have to pay attention to holding the harp and holding it safely, which can be quite distracting if you're just starting out. Harps with higher number of strings, which have between 26 and 38 strings, like the 34 Corrigan behind me, will be larger and will usually be designed for the instrument to stand on the floor while you play. I would suggest that you go for that, as then you don't have to worry so much about managing the weight of the harp and playing at the same time. The most important thing is that you're comfortable. Two very similar models with exact same number of strings and very similar shape may feel completely different when you sit down to play them. It's not great if you buy the harp and after a few days of practice you discover that the shape of the instrument just doesn't sit with you. So if you decide to hire a harp, you are at an advantage here, because you can always change your mind later. Harps without levers are definitely cheaper, but they will only allow you to play in one key. And for those of you who wonder what that means, I will explain shortly. In music we've got a total of 24 keys. 12 major keys and 12 minor keys, with the major and minor keys related to one another. A harp with no levers, like this one here, will only allow you to play in one major and possibly one minor key, although to play in that minor key you might already need to make some adjustments to the tuning of the harp. Changing the key will mean retuning a number of strings, and to do this you will have to use a tuning key, like this one, to tighten or loosen some of the strings that you need to adjust. That has to be done uh, by loosening and tightening string for quite a bit, so cannot really be done while you play. A fully levered harp, like the one behind me, with a lever attached to every string, allows you to play in 8 major and 5 minor keys, so it's absolutely sufficient for a beginner. If you follow the liver harp syllabus for institutions like ABRSM or Trinity here in the UK, you can go all the way to grade 8 with this type of harp, provided that it has 34 strings or more. As I said before, the number of strings will affect the overall size and therefore of course the weight of the harp. As long as your harp is not a lap harp, the weight of the harp shouldn't change much to how you feel when you play. 
In case of larger harps that are meant to stay on the floor, good quality instruments from respectable harp makers will be balanced in a way that will allow you to play while feeling hardly any of their weight. Check my video on finding the balance of the harp to learn more about that and how to find that sweet spot. Sometimes when you read ads and descriptions of different instruments, you may get the impression that there is some kind of a competition between harp makers to produce the lightest harp possible. And while there is some truth in that, for those of you who read this and are worried whether a heavier harp will be still possible to move from one place to another, I want to put your mind at ease and ensure you, all harps, even the biggest ones like that one, can be moved around. Remember that it will take some time before you learn and feel confident enough to be able to play for others and therefore willing to take the harp out. During that learning period, the most important thing is that you are comfortable when you play. Once you start performing, you will be able to have a better idea how often do you actually need to move your harp around and therefore how light it has to be. And here's a little side note. When we first start out, we often imagine ourselves taking our harps everywhere with us. And then we look at airline restrictions and we think maybe we don't need to play that much while we're on holiday. But even if you think that you will travel a lot with your harp, I would say first try to find a good quality instrument, possibly a rented one. Learn to play first and then see how often do you actually need to take the harp outside. Because if you need to do that a lot, you might want to save some money and maybe buy an ultralight carbon fiber model or maybe you want uh, one harp to play while you're at home and then another cheaper lap harp with a good balance of um, between number of strings and the size to take with you when you travel. I think you will be able to have a better idea once you learn to play. What type of strings do I want? Here you may need to ask yourself some additional questions and the first and most important one will be what type of sound do you like? Different materials will make different type of sound but also remember that the same type of string from the same manufacturer will sound very differently depending on a particular model of a harp. As you learn to play your taste will develop and therefore change so I think that it is quite important that when you start, you start with a good quality instrument which has a pleasant sound, whatever you play. The next question is, what kind of string tension would you be happy with and do you prefer lighter touch or higher tension? And I think this is the kind of question that you wouldn't really be able to answer until you learn to play well enough and also have an occasion to compare different types of harps with different string tensions. Finally, Different materials will behave differently when tuning and also some may last longer or may need to be replaced sooner rather than later. While this will all depend on how much you play and what kind of temperature and humidity will the harp be kept at, kept at, you may also want to factor all this into your decision. Of course you can argue that you can replace different types of strings on one instrument but bear in mind that some harps may have a restriction on what type of string and what kind of tension they can be subjected to. It can be hard to tell the difference between different harp models based only on a recording. You really need to be in the room to experience the sound firsthand. It's also worth remembering that every player's sound will be a bit different and depending on the kind of music that you want to play, you may find some types and models more suitable than others. So to make the best possible choice, one really good thing that you can do is to learn to play while trying out as many harps as possible. So renting a harp at first, asking to try your teacher's instrument, Visiting harp festivals are all great ways to find out what works best for you. As you may have guessed by now, when I'm asked about what's the best harp for a beginner, my reply is a rented harp. And there are a few reasons why you can put trust in rented harps. First, they need to be sturdy enough to serve several players and to come back to the maker in good condition. And second, the harp maker really wants you to be happy with their instrument and customer service because then you will hopefully continue playing and then decide to buy your new harp from them. So if you can, I would say rent first and use the money that you save that way to either invest in lessons with a teacher or put them aside for your future dream harp when you know what you want it to be. And while you learn to play, make this future harp vision as detailed as possible. 
I hope you found this episode useful. Let me know in the comments, what is your dream harp like? I'll be looking forward to hearing from you and hopefully to seeing you here for more lessons. Take care for now. Bye!